Photographers Brendan and Sandra have come up with a product that they are incredibly proud of. Our product is something that we could not believe had not been invented before. But at first glance, it has the sharks confused. Oh, my Lord, what oh is my this? God. Oh, that's a bit creepy. What is it? Actually, why is it? I wonder how much these people have spent on their business. Don't you think it's a bit creepy? I'm out first. I'm really hoping that the sharks love our product as much as we do. It's a world first, and we're just hoping that a shark comes on board so we can bring this to life. Hi, sharks. My name is Brendan, and this is my wife, Sandra. And we are the co-founders of Stand In Baby. Today, we are seeking a $200,000 investment for a 20% stake in our company. Stand In Baby is a one-of-a-kind newborn training mannequin of realistic size, weight and movement, designed to be a safer, more efficient solution to infant training. Sharks, as you know, there is heaps of mannequins available. But surprisingly, there was none that functioned and articulated like a real baby. None that required you to support the head or allowed you to practice realistic handling and positioning of a newborn. Born from the necessity to safely train staff in our newborn photography studio, we undertook two years of R&D, utilised crowdfunding, and with our own success within the newborn photography industry, we foresee rapid growth for Stand In Baby both here and worldwide. So, Sharks, who wants to make babies with us? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Very good. So, you're photographers. Our background is photography. And the thing with newborn photography is you can't just pick up a baby and give it a crack. You need to know what you're doing. You need crack. to know how you're going to position them, how you're going to light them, and how to achieve the poses that you see. Uh, Brendan and Sandra, I'm Steve. How are you doing? Hi, Steve. Good, thanks, um, Assuming I've got some recent experience with this. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it meant to be this flexible? It's made to be a limp feel. So say, for example, with the head, when you're supporting the head there, Steve, if you turn it far enough, it stops where a baby's head would stop, yet it still remains limp the whole time. Creating moulds and creating this product mm -hmm. wouldn't be cheap. Can you tell me how much you put into the business? We personally put in $220,000 of our own money but we've actually returned that as of July last year. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? Yes, yeah. we're in profit. So we're actually in profit. Wow. What, what made you think there was a market for this? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I look at this and think... Who bought it? Yeah. Newborn photographers. photographers, that's we'll... our market. <laughs> When you're taking a photo of a baby, you need to take several photos of babies. That means you have to move them. What we had to do was learn how to move and reposition babies to get the optimal amount of photos that we could. But there's not that many photographers that take pictures of babies. How do they Actually, all find no, it? No, no, no. It is second to wedding photography. Is that right? Yeah. It yeah. is it's the biggest big growing industry. field. So end June 30, 2016, uh -huh. what, was your, what was your rev? Can we just do that quickly? Because I'm still blown away this is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's good with the numbers? Brendan. Me. Uh, the gross was uh, $10,000 and the net was uh, a loss of $125,000. Hang on, you're getting the terminology wrong. I'm just wanting top line Revenue, sale. sales. The sales. income into the company. Including tax or including tax. Okay, let's no. stop again. Yeah. In financial year 2016, mm -hmm. what were your total sales? How many? How yeah, much that, did you that's, invoice? That's what we're saying. That's what it was. Ten that, how many? Ten thousand well, oh, okay. dollars? Sorry, I, I've got it now. <laughs> right, okay, let's start again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, it was eight hundred and ten thousand dollars in total over the last two years, and I know within that within that year. Um, we had because all of the tooling and all of the so major. So we go into the question. Yeah. What is your revenue? That the sales you've made, the most you know, one of the, the second year. most important thing you in care about. In the 2016. About. Yep. Our 310,000. And that was minus yep. 125. Net? Was it that year? Yeah, well, it was a. Uh, um, That's what, no, no, I don't have excuses. Just, just <laughs> no, honestly, right. mate, we just want, <laughs> So, what was the sales revenue in 2017? It was it was actually a bit less, but only no, because. No, 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 number, number. The number was. We, we need this, mate. If you can't answer this, you're in, you're you're in more trouble than Ned Kelly, right?
Brendan and Sandra have invented the world's first articulated newborn training mannequin. What were your total sales? The sharks are intrigued, but Brendan is struggling to remember his numbers. We, we need this, mate. If you can't enter this, you're, you're, you're in more trouble than Ned Kelly, right? The number was... I'm not too sure. All right, and so this year, yeah, what yeah. are you expecting it to be? Gross revenue, yep. um, around five hundred thousand dollars. That's not okay. That, that's, so gross revenue is five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. How many of these things so far you've sold? Thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred. So mm -hmm. how many more do you think you can sell to the photography market? There's, there's actually a couple of problems that I've got at the moment. Okay. H how many more do you think you can sell? You, you, we have really projected really profits hard to pull of, an answer out of you. Sorry. It's so hard to pull answers out of We have projected of 1.2 for 2000 For the photography mark? Yes. So that's in dollars. How many units do you think you can sell? I think we're probably around the 10% at the moment of people who could use them. And you're the numbers guy? Yeah. Man, you, are, <laughs> you, you, you have to get better answers. How many I, have I, you... I, I hate to think if you got any close to a customer, you'd scare the daylights out of them. Excuse me, how many have you sold into the US? Uh, I would say it would be about an eighth of all of our product goes into. You would say... You need some help in your business to help you manage your own numbers. I mean, you should know, given this is your baby, mm -hmm. where every one of these has we been do. sold. You do. We well, do know. In a normal boardroom, <laughs> I would have my figures. We just don't have them here today. Yeah. We'll put it down to nerves then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely nerves. You, this is clearly your baby. And yet we're all really struggling to get that confidence in you as entrepreneurs. Yeah. So you come across as very clever people who kind of not get the answers yeah. to us. So congratulations Thank on your you. business. Thank it's you. not an investment for me. So Appreciate I'm it. out. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. So have you had feedback from the medical sector at all? Yes, we have. Yep. They are literally They're loving, loving it. it. In the last couple of weeks, we have employed a medical device uh, sales rep, and she's it's getting it's a lot of good feedback. We've already sold 13 because it's great for medical imaging, it's great for any sort of training where you need to have practice at it prior to jumping in with a real baby. Emergency services, a bunch of things. There's a, there's a heap, yeah. Are they, are they willing to pay? Because it's really hard to get cash They actually told guys. us it was too cheap. Oh, oh put really? the price up then. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the medical. 13 that you've sold into the medical world, is that hospitals, physiotherapy clinics, what is it? 10 of those 13 are going to the one hospital for their um, antenatal class. That's, that's how it's going to sell, right? The part that I got excited about was she's been on three weeks. She's already sold 10 to one antenatal class. How many antenatal classes are happening? We have in Australia. Australia wide, US wide. Yeah, in Australia we have uh, 1,300 hospitals and around 400 would have maternity within Australia. And are you saying that anywhere in the world you have no competitors? As far as we know, There's, yeah. Well, in the real sense of your product definition, you have no competitors. Yes. The possibility of this product is amazing, right? So it is surprising. Honestly, I didn't know what evil Freddy show to expect when I first walked in and saw that thing sitting <laughs> We there, actually right? get that same reaction from yeah. everybody, so... Yeah, um, <laughs> this is... There's, there's a massive opportunity here. Absolutely. 200K for 25%. Was that an offer? I didn't quite get that. <laughs> I think they understood, and that's all I'm interested in. <laughs> so, Brendan, you're the numbers man. Yes. 200K for 33%. I'll give what you want. 200K for 20%. I've got businesses in the, in, the, in the health space, but one of our businesses has just been invested in by the Gates Foundation. So uh, I, I know the issues in that space, but I know the opportunity in that space as well. The fact that you weren't clear in, in some of your answers was really quite disconcerting. I can't get to the million dollar valuation, but I will make you an offer. 200,000 for 30%. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Let's just recap the offers. So Glenn's in for 33%, Steve's in for 20%, Janine's in for 30%, and I'm in for 25%. So what are you going to do? Can we have a talk about? Yeah, you can go out there and have a talk. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, uh, don't be too long, though, because the yeah. sharks are getting restless. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gates would just buy like a million of these for any natal classes in, in Africa. Yeah. I am leaning towards one of the boys. Because yeah. I think they can bring a lot to the table. Steve's right on it, the right amount of money. But then I do like Andrew. Steve, he's definitely got a game plan, doesn't he? So what are you thinking? I could put money on this. Who do I, I think, think they're going to go I've got on? a feeling it's a bit of a Queensland fest. Yeah, I think it's... No, it's not like Queensland Fest. They've, they've all researched and realised you just don't have any value and you're all pretty hopeless. All right. So therefore they're going with me. So, Brendan, Sandra, what did you discuss? We were wondering two things. One, Andrew, would you consider coming down in yours at all? I might. 20? Yeah. 20%, 200? And oh, come on, do you want me or not? We're, we're the same. Yes. Are, are you rejecting my offer? Or no, are you we're definitely injuries? not. We're, our next question is this. Would you consider pairing up with any of the other sharks? No. No? I'll give you 20% now, otherwise I'm out in five seconds. I, I gave you what you're after. I'm keen for the business. I know how to take this. To, to answer your question, else. I'm prepared to do a deal at 20% with Glenn. Does that mean 10% each, is it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's 10% each for Glenn and I. We're both putting in 100,000. Don't say yes yet. See, see if I go lower than 20. Now, look, you've made it really clear you want Andrew, so I'm out. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Nothing lost on that one. Don't worry about that. She's pretty good at pouring juices. Oh. You've got the amount of 20% and you've ignored me. Interesting negotiation tactic, right? I'm very keen here. I actually I do know that I am the most qualified with respect to my medical investments, especially in the US. Uh, I'm the one who came out and gave you what you asked for. Yes, absolutely. Without, without having to come back and actually um, beg for a change in what they were doing. Sandra and Brendan, so, this is about you, no one else. You've got what you asked for, let's get going. This is a really hard decision. I think we're going to take the two sharks. I was about to have... counter offer. I'm done. Sorry, That's Dave. okay. <gasps> All right. Feels done. Like before he just keeps whinging. It's tough. I yeah, know. Thank, thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you. We're really excited. Well done, Queensland. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't need to do it. I hope, hope, you, um, hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank All you. the best. Thank you. Right. I've worked out the first 1,000s, $1.1 million in the US. I like it. Sorry, Steve. I just felt that they wanted Glenn, really. I think this is the maddest I've seen Steve all season. Oh, He's really creepy. Oh. He's yeah, he really bought. angry. I can't believe it. Why is he angry at it? He thinks he's the best partner. Next into the tank, a married couple who've been sweating bullets to bring their product to life. G'day Sharks, my name is Michelle and this is my husband Troy and we are the founders of Pit Stop in Queensland. Today we are seeking a $50,000 investment for 25% equity in our business. So Sharks, I'd like you to imagine spending the time and effort every day to dress smartly for work or a special event, only to have all your hard work undone by the simple act of raising your arm. Uh oh. <laughs> that is gross. <laughs> and it's not just him that suffers. I'm sure you can relate to this. You're travelling in a crowded bustle train and you find yourself getting stuck in this position. Yuck! <laughs> <laughs> 
Some people think that by wearing a t-shirt or singlet under their tops is a suitable solution to the problem. But have a look at the state of those underarms. Ooh. And if you do the laundry like me, you know you never get the smell out. P.U. <laughs> Fortunately, we've developed a product to combat wet patches, body odour and discoloration on your garments. Sharks, we proudly present to you Pit Stop Underarm Sweat Guards. So Pit Stop is an underarm <laughs> guard. <laughs> How many shirts you got on? <laughs> <That's laughs> <that. laughs> He's thin! He's thin! <laughs> Pit Stop is a guard that attaches easily to the underarm of your shirt absorbing moisture and keeping the armpit fresh and BO free. And I should know, do you know how many times I've had to smell my husband's armpit oh. while we've been developing our prototype? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Someone had to, I wasn't doing it myself. OK, Sharks, it's time for us to stop sweating up here and for you to start investing. <laughs> well done. Wonderful, that was Thank a great you. presentation. Thank you. So, Michelle and Troy, that's $50,000 for 25% of your company. That's correct. That's great. Could we have a look at the product? Could sure. You... Absolutely. Would you like to bring it over to you? Yes, Thank please. You. Thank you. Great, thanks. And you designed it, Michelle? Yes, we did. We both designed it ourselves. How long have you had it out there to prove that it works? We've been trading. This is our fourth year of trading. Oh, fourth year of trading. So you're a mature business. Yes. Yeah. Great. Primarily, it's available online, as well as word of mouth. What's the sales price in a pharmacy? OK, so we retail at $10. How many's in a box? 10 pairs. So I've got 10 days of sweat-free armpits for 10 bucks. That's correct. Correct. Can I ask a question that we're all thinking? Sure. How different is this to a sanitary towel? and wife team Troy and Michelle Tornabeen want a shark to invest in their sweat pad business Pit Stop. But their product design has been called into question. Can I ask a question that we're all thinking? Sure. How different is this to a sanitary towel? Pretty much they are based on the concept of a sanitary pad. That was actually what we used as our prototype yep. initially. So you can imagine, I think it was about six to eight months we were wandering around, well, I was wandering around actually, with pretty much a sanitary pad under my arm and giving it a go to work out what worked, what didn't work. The thing is with the sanitary pads, they tend to be very cardboardy or they tend to be plasticky and you can hear the, the, the sort it's of sense of them. So, and that's me talking about it. A male talking about it. I'm going, well, really? I'm an expert. Well, because I wore them for 12 months, I, that's, I feel like I'm an expert on them. But that was the, the main reasoning behind them. They, they are designed differently. So yeah, okay. these sit in, once initially you wear them. It's quite soft, it's really soft. Yeah. Yes. yeah, once you wear them, you're sort of conscious of it. But I've been wearing them, I wear them every single day um, and I don't even realise I've got them on half the time. Is it that big a problem? It can be. There's a lot of people that actually have chronic sweating, which yes. have to be treated with Botox and all sorts of stuff. The aim of our investment today is just to get it actually out there for people to know that you don't have to go and use all the chemicals. There is some solution out there and a possibility for you. And why pit stop? When I saw that, I thought, oh, this is like something you pee on. Oh, stop, Steve. <laughs> Well, that is. I mean, it, it's, it doesn't instinctively say that this is to stop sweat. I mean, to me, I, I think that, that so far as people naturally understanding this product, because I wouldn't, if I walked past it, I'd think it looks like I want yeah. something to do with a car. I agree, the brand doesn't quite fit the product. I, I can't get excited about a sanitary pad for under my arms. <laughs> I really can't. Um, I wish you all the best, but I'm out. Thank, Thank you very best. much. Thank you, Steve. Thanks very much. So tell us about sales. Okay, so sales have been increasing, so we've been really pleased by that. Uh, the last financial year, we've increased by 60% in our sales. So last year we sold $31,000. That's the um, total sales. And then we had net profit of around 8,500. 
You've been going four years and you had a net profit of eight and a half thousand. That's correct. What we need with this investment is to have a strategic marketing campaign behind it uh, to take us to that next level and generate those sales. Michelle, Troy, I'm ready to make a decision. To me, it's very niche. And I don't see the, the potential, you know, in terms of the market. I wish you luck, but for those reasons, I'm out. Yeah, Michelle and Troy, you've come up with an invention. Great job, Aussie Innovative. I think you've got to front the sort of companies that are going to distribute this for you in the right space, the pharmaceutical and uh, supermarket space that says this is a solution for a problem. But I think it's a product, not a business. Uh, I'm out. Down to two. <laughs> <laughs> Only selling this product online is a hiding to nowhere. People need to just pop it in their trolley every single time. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So for that reason, I'm out. You guys are madly in love. You can just see it. <laughs> <laughs> And you're enjoying the journey. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. So, yeah, you're having a bit of fun with it. You, yep. You've obviously got a great sense of humour. Yes. You have to, to be able to... <laughs> Look, the, for me, the customers have, have sort of spoken with regard to the volumes. Mm. Who knows, it might take off you know, and be a rocket. Thank you, thank you. But unfortunately, not for me today. I'm out. Thank Thanks you, Jin. Thanks. Wish you luck. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. the presentation. You did a great job. That's and right. it was really good fun. Good. We believe in our product and we're going to keep going forward. First up, a scientist who wants to sell the sharks on the food of the future. My name is Sky. I'm 31 years old and I'm from Sydney. I never used to have a Barbie doll when I was a little kid. I always used to be out in the garden collecting bugs and getting really dirty. I've always wanted to be an entomologist, which is a bug scientist. This is my giant burrowing cockroach. Her name's Woodstock and she's about 10 years old. She likes to eat eucalyptus leaves and I take her out to do educational shows. Some of the bugs actually live for quite a long time, so they have really, really interesting personalities. She actually likes to blow kisses and she likes to be pet as well, just like a cat or a dog would. The challenge for me definitely has been trying to get Australian consumers over that initial ick factor when it comes to bugs. They're very nutritious. I think they'll either love it or they'll hate it, so I'm prepared either way. Hello, sharks. My name is Sky, and my company is called Edible Bug Shop. I'm asking for a $170,000 investment for a 20% equity in our company. Yes, that's right. I'm about to sell you on all these fantastic edible bugs. So for the past seven years, we've been breeding edible insects specifically for human consumption. We've developed a pattern pending uh, insect flower as well, which is high in protein. It's low in fat. It's got lots of good micronutrients in it, like calcium and iron as well. And I'm sure you're thinking right now, why should I invest in edible insects? Yeah. Well, <laughs> by the year 2050, the world's population will grow to over 9 billion people. And traditional forms of livestock that we have at the moment just won't be enough to support this population. Edible insects are definitely the future of food. And we aim to stamp ourselves as number one in the world in edible insect production. Now, I welcome any questions that you have, and if you would like to try some bugs today, I definitely welcome that as well. I'd love to try some. What would you like to try? <laughs> I would say the cookie. A cookie? <laughs> it's a good starter because it's not too um, bug-like, yes. <laughs> What am I about to try? What, what is this? So this is a chocolate chip cookie, but we replace some of the flour with the insect flour. So it makes it high in protein, it's high in calcium and iron as well. I'll pass today, but I'll think about it. I might come up and grab one later if I get hungry. Mm. Not bad.
Can you give us some comparisons, please? If I've got cricket flour or, or insect flour, yep, yep. and the nutritional benefit of that compared to regular flour, what is the benefit? Yep, so the, um, the insect flour is 65% protein. Um, it's got double the amount of calcium as milk, three times the amount of iron as spinach does. So it's kind of a superfood. How do you know? Have you done clinical trials? We've done, yeah, we have all the, all the um, NADO accreditation. The, 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 the carbohydrate content of that uh, flour? There's about uh, 5.6 grams per 100 grams. Is that all, really? Yeah. So and can you make bread from it? So what sort of flour is it? So it's just basically we dry the crickets and we grind them up into a fine powder. So it doesn't replace regular flour, it's more of a supplement item. For instance, with the normal cookie recipe, you'd replace about a third of the regular flour with the insect flour. So, so what, what is the cost to produce a kilo of bug flour? Um, so it costs us about $6 per kilo. Wow, OK. Um, and then we would sell that at the moment for about $80 a kilo. Excuse me, 80 Yeah. $80 per yep. kilo. Oh, nice. It's a good margin. How do you think you can overcome what's going to be a natural resistance that people don't like the thought of eating bugs? It's hard for people because you don't necessarily think of a cow when you're eating a steak. It doesn't look the same. I definitely see the insect flower as the way of the future with insect eating. So you're getting all the nutritional benefits of eating the bugs without having to look at them. Four out of five sharks have tried that. I actually think you've got 80% market acceptance in some respects. I mean, that's one way to look at this. When I ride my Vespa, I eat a bug or two, believe me, on a Saturday morning, but <gasps> I'm just not a bug-eating guy, and I think for that reason, I'm out. Well, I think you can't sell it unless you're willing to try it, so exactly. that's probably a right option. <laughs> that's why I'm out. You got any vital statistics with respect to your sales? And yep, whatnot? so our turnover for last year was 150000 that was 60% profit, so 90,000. After all expenses are taken out of the business, you're keeping 90,000 bucks? Yeah. yeah, okay. Apart from the money, what are the other pieces that you think you're missing? I'm an entomologist and a food scientist. I've got a science brain. I kind of need someone to help me expand the business so that, you know, it's more appealing to a wider audience, not just scientists. And you want to work with this full time, 100%? Well, I work in my business full time at the moment. Is there anything in that process that is patentable, that is unique to you, that you can keep? Yeah, so we've got the, the bug flower is actually patent pending at the moment, so um, the patent will be pushed through on that soon. So competitors, who are your competitors in the Australian market? Um, or nobody. world market? Because people would be importing bug flower. No, um, you can't import edible insects into Australia because of our strict quarantine requirements. So there is no other competitor in this market but you? Yes. You tick a lot of the boxes for me in terms of what makes a fledgling business a big business, but where it leads me to is the valuation. You're valuing the business at 850. I'm tempted, but I'm I'm not tempted at your current valuation. I'm uh, I think I'm I'm at the point where I would make an investment, but I, I would want to bring your valuation down. I don't really think it's unrealistic to have a valuation like that considering, you know, the range of products that we have already established and the, the valuation of the pattern as well, which is the main thing. I mean, it is very tempting. But I do think the valuation on your business is the, is the challenge. Um, I'm out. So Sky, I do see competition for you. So whilst there might not be somebody in the direct space, anything that is a protein enhancer that's, that's not this is actually competition to you. At this point, it's not an investment for me, so I'm out. The big issue here is the fact that it, it's, it's niche. It's still, this is not gonna be accepted in every household in Australia. I think you need to take a good hard look at your valuation. I'll, uh, I'll get out now, thank you, I'm done. So where are we? Janine? I will make you an offer. I will give you the 170,000, but I want half. So, 50%, 170,000. 
I do like that Janine has the expertise in the food area, which is obviously more beneficial to the business that we have at the moment. But I think 50% is a little bit much to give away, seen as all of the work that we've put into the business to start with. So would you consider 30%? I wouldn't know. Because the, the critical thing is you need people in the space, in retail, in food, and I truly think that where I've been in the last 14 years in this space, I do think that that is actually a very fair valuation for where it is and what we can also add. Yes, there's no question that you've put your blood, sweat and tears in this and this is your baby, and I, and I don't want to diminish that in any way, shape or form. And I do think that, you know, I do, I do honestly also think it's high risk for me because I think it might be just that tweak too early, even though your sales are saying it's, it's sort of coming. I love the protection. I think you're a very intelligent woman. And so I think we could work really well together. But I think for us to, to really drive it, I do think I need to be an equal partner. Congratulations. Just think about the other 50% being worth millions of dollars. Don't worry about the value. <laughs> That's right. That's what well, you've got to think be. about. It will be. Okay. It will be. Well <laughs> Thank done. You. I was really considering whether giving 50% away was the right thing to do. And I think um, we've come away with a good partner. She has a quality that's very rare, I think, which is that she's very smart, she's done a great job, but she's still prepared to learn. She's she kind. will listen and she will be coached. Next into the tank, a woman ready to turn an ancient island tradition into a thriving business. Hello, Shark. My name is Gladys McKenzie, the owner of Glad Mac, and I'm seeking 250,000 for 20% of my company. Glad Mac is introducing a new product called the G-Stick. Now you wondered, what is the G-Stick? Yes, the mind boggles. <laughs> the G-Stick is a tongue scraper. A and tongue scraper, you said? Yes. OK. <laughs> the G-Stick came from my memory of my grandmother cleaning her tongue. She breaks a, a branch, she chew on the end of it and brush her teeth. After she finished brushing her teeth, she would split that branch in half and bend it in the arc and then scrape her tongue. Now, oh, this is the horror story of a, of a before G-Stick and the after G-Stick. I can see you're all shocked about that, but that's the truth. When you wake up in the morning, that's how your tongue looks like. Oh, it is fine. Yeah. It's good to know. They, they keep moving so is that, that, that's after a big night or just a normal <laughs> night? Or? That's normal. It feels like the bottom of a cockatoo's cage, right? So. The tongue, it's like a sponge and it's full of bacteria that causes bad breath and gum disease. And, and that's what the white is, it's the bacteria. Yes, the before. So when you clean it with the G-stick, that's what it looks like. Now, I've come up with the idea to package the G-Stick with a toothbrush. There's nothing out there in the supermarket for tongue scrape. The main feature here is to educate everybody and bring awareness into cleaning our tongues. Remember, Shark, education is money. Education is power. Join me to make the best of everything. So just to confirm, Gladys, 250,000 for 20% of your business. Okay, now carry on with your demonstration. Let's have a look at the product. Mr. McGrath. Thank you, Gladys. Gladys, where are you from? I'm from Fiji. From Fiji, and how long have you been in Australia? Um, 30 odd years. 30 odd years, yeah. so you came here as a two-year-old. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Could you give me a bit of a background, a bit of a history lesson on why the G-Stick? G for Gladys. That's why I call it G-Stick. Oh. Nice. Now, you were wondering how do you use that? Yeah. Uh, yes. 
There's two knobs there. So you bend it like that, stick your tongue out, and scrape. I don't think Australia needs to see me do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this... <laughs> oh, 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 it's all over my shit. Oh, my God. Excuse me. <laughs> I guess it's something you do in front of the mirror when you're brushing your teeth. <laughs> I was going to demonstrate it for you. <laughs> and so what, what, how much money have you put into this so far, Gladys? 50,000. <laughs> but to make it, it cost me $3.45. Selling it out to the public, I was going $9. That's with a toothbrush. Remember, I'm packaging it with a toothbrush. Gladys, with the valuation, seems very optimistic. Talk to me about how you came, I came up, up with... I came up with the valuation uh, working on 5% of the population that I can attract on this business, and that's 1,500,000. Just rough estimate. I've never heard of this before in my life, cleaning I know. the tongue. No. Maybe that's why I'm so... So is there a cultural uh, significance? Yeah, I mean, this, this happens a lot in Fiji? Yeah. With me, you're preaching to the converted. I use one of these every day. Really? Yeah, I'm totally sold on the importance and the need for this. What I'm not so keen about you, the design, is the one that I have at home is actually can be held with one hand. When you're having two hands, good control, you get all the gunk out in one go. I use that one that you use. Ah, it's messy for me. This one, you do it in one go. Gladys, can I, can I tell you something? I can't even listen to this pitch without shivering and shaking. I've got no idea if my tongue smells or not. I hope it doesn't. I, I cannot get the least bit interested in this. I do apologise. I'm out. Thank you, anyway. Gladys, one of the hardest things is what we call market development. In other words, the first thing you have to do is teach people that they need it. Whether you can change people's habits, my dentist has been telling me to uh, floss my teeth for a very long time, and uh, I still forget more often than not. Um, so for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Gladys. I really take my hat off to you for the, having the courage. And your grandma would be proud of you, you know? I'm, I'm sure she was obviously an important figure in your life. Um, I think that you need to partner with someone for a much smaller amount of money to get this product known and noticed. For that reason, I'm out. I was sitting here going, I'd like to do a deal with you. But I think you've made one error. And that's asking for $250,000. So you couldn't get your percentage up, like uh, 250, but go to 30%? She would need 500%. I know. Oh. <laughs> See, and they're just what, so, so what I'd like to say is, yeah. Well done, congratulations. But the only reason I am out is because of that number. But good luck. Thank you. So everybody's out? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. I, I learned about Ayurvedic medicine many years ago, which has come from the Indian background. And they are great believers in this. And the importance of this is just another mechanism for getting rid of toxins, many of which manifest on your tongue. So I, I'm, I'm totally sold on the importance. I, I think it's a great product and a very good practice. Your design looks good. Um, your valuation seems very, very high. So based on the valuation, and whilst I like the product, I'm out. Okay. Thank you very much, Eddie. Thank you very much, Eddie. They love the concept of it. Um, my valuation was too high. I'm going to look at my tongue completely differently. <laughs> you do this every morning. Every day. It's just like a little, it's like a paddle and it's got a little fan shape at the top, but it's easy to use and that might be a problem, but you just sort of scrape the tongue after. Our next entrepreneur tonight is Rachel, who plans to give the sharks an absolute earful. I can do this. 
My product is fantastic. Everybody is waiting for my product. Bill Gates said he wants to have a computer in every home. I say I want to have my product in every home. Hi, Sharks. My name is Rachel. I'm from Surface Paradise, and I'm here looking for a partner and investment of $350,000 for 25% of return of my business. All right. Ear socks protect you from dye, water, and chemicals running into your ear canals. That's it? That's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. We like brevity, that's fabulous. <laughs> well, it's fairly simple. <laughs> <laughs> right, I love a succinct pitch. That was just fabulous. So you want $350,000 yeah, for 25% of your business, yes. which values it at $1.4 million. Correct. Yeah. And you gave us a 30 second pitch. Not yeah. even. Yeah. <laughs> if we're lucky. <laughs> All right, well, tell us a bit more about the product. Show me the product. How's it work? Um, you got the product next to you, actually. Yeah, if you like to try that. Like this? Yes. Yeah. This is a prophylactic instrument yes. <laughs> for people that have a phobia about getting water down their ear canal. Yeah, exactly. Or fit. chemicals or, or dye around your uh, outer ear. So when you actually go down in the centre, hold it in the centre... This doesn't work. Does it go over the top of your ear? Yeah. It doesn't, if... doesn't fit. When you go on the centre and you hold it there and you pull it on top of it and then include your earlobes. So you, you slide it at the top first. That's it. <laughs> and then and, and, that? and include oh, the earlobe. I've lost it. So how did you, how on earth did you come up with this idea? Tell me. Well... Give me the story behind it. I used to go and dye my hair at the hairdressers and uh, I would get ink on my ears and it was very uncomfortable because the, the hairdresser had to rub that off my ear. Right. And it's embarrassing, it's uncomfortable and it's like, okay. <laughs> Work. And you still walk out with stain on your on your ears. Not good, not good. And no. And then I, I talked to other women and they had the same problem. Rachel, where are you from? Uh, originally from Switzerland. Switzerland? Nice. Yes. And how long have you been in Australia? 17 years. 17? Yes. All right, so we've got a condom type product for your ear, right? Yes. I am so great, it's not funny. So I have to get my hair dyed all the time. Yes. Right? And they just put a little bit of Vaseline on it. Yes. And, you know, and it's yes. no, no problems. Have you checked that anyone's bought any? Has anyone bought any? These are the first products. Oh. Right, so, oh, so it's not for no, stuff. No, no, so no, you no. haven't. But I couldn't get more. That's, that's the start of it. We're sitting here with the only prototypes. That's right. Anywhere in the world. <laughs> and pretty much the last ones. And that ended up the other end, just busted one. I had put it in my ear. It wasn't going to get reused, mate. I'm sorry, <laughs> but... Where'd you get it made? Good question. Um, we had to find the manufacturer and we found one. And that was in China. And I went and I flew to China only to find out that the factory wasn't there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And then the, um, they said, we can't manufacture your ear socks. <gasps> so, OK, let's right down the steps. So now, make one like this, and he, uh, he made one, and we actually produced one in socks then and there. Well done, good on yeah, you. Good, yeah. good, good tenacity, it's awesome. And I came home with one ear socks. You came home with one. Uh, that's a very <laughs> expensive ear socks. Yes, it? it was very. So what's your plan? Okay, so tell, tell me how you're gonna go from China, because you've obviously got the tenacity, to giving us prototypes, to conquering the world. I'm going to buy a condom machine. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. I want to own a condom machine. I want to own a part of a condom machine. 250 grand. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> but where do you buy a condom machine? From the condom factory. From the condom factory. <laughs> Rachel, how much money have you put into this? Uh, I, I would say over $80,000. $80,000. Goodness me. Excuse me. A moment of silence, please. For dead money. 
Rachel, $80,000 of your hard earned. Yes. Really? Yeah. How many do you need to sell to recover your $80,000? A metric shit ton. Um, I didn't think so much about recovering my $80,000 because that was, off, that was a lot of it was learning money. Look, I, I'll just, if, if I'd invested in this, Rachel, I'd get an earful from my wife and everybody else. So <laughs> you can protect I'm, your ear, I'm though. really sorry. I, I, look, I wish you well, but don't spend any more money on this until you've got paying customers. I'm out. Thank you. Rachel, Rachel. Steve. Um, I, I really admire the tenacity you show by going to China. I, I'm with Andy here. $80,000 is dead. I don't think anyone should chase it with $350,000. I always hope I'm wrong. I'm out. You didn't want him anyway. <laughs> oh, I like the idea. You think there is a definite problem you've, you've had to solve. 100%. And, and, and you know, I, I just don't know if people need it or not, but because I don't get my hair coloured. <laughs> Bush. Much. <coughs> Much. <laughs> well, especially men, they actually don't want to show that they colour their hair. That's true. Yes. <laughs> There is an obvious problem you're solving. <laughs> oh. um, th look, quite simply, um, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine in Brisbane. He's one of the leading wholesaler products for hair salons across Queensland. He has a whole bunch of hair salons. So I'm going to support your journey by making that introduction, but I'm not going to support your journey with any of my hard-earned cash. So today, I'm out. Thank you. I would love to introduce you to the folks at NAC, an Australian fabulous brand of hair products and see if it would be a promotional item for them. But for this investment, I'm out. Thank you. Rachel, I don't think you've wasted your $80,000. And the reason I don't believe you have is because you've used that $80,000 to teach you about business. So it's not money down the tube. At least you've got to start. Yeah. And quite often the shame of it when people do businesses and fail is they never keep going. But you'll get there. Yes. yes so exactly. good luck, but I'm out. Thanks, Rachel. Thank well you all so much for this opportunity. Now we will get yeah. this back. Oh, Don't take these. There's only five left. Come on. <laughs> no, you can no, oh, no, 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 no. You must take them. Yeah, you need come and them. take them. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Thank you. Steve's just going to break them, so thanks, Rachel. No. no that's right. Thank you, you need so all your samples sweet. back. Thank you so much. Well well I'll leave the broken one here. Oh. Rachel, thank, thank you so much. much. All the best. Thank See you, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Bye. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> Well, she's well, I'm happy. glad she was happy. Anyway, someone may give her a reality check or <laughs> see something in this. Oh, who knows? I'm very excited to what is coming because I'm not stopping. So, ear socks, here we come. <laughs>